This is where I live. The former white safe haven of Johannesburg. In an elite suburb called Kalani. My building is tended by a battalion of janitors and is highly secured. See what I mean? Yeah, that's okay. Let him in, please. Most of the people who live here are white. A committee of die-hard residents control the building. They set the rules. The most important of which is who is allowed in. Anyone who's not a resident must leave their name at security. If you're here to work, don't even think of entering without showing your passport. Excuse me, your ID. But things are beginning to change. More and more black families are moving in, and this is where it sometimes gets confusing for the security guards, who can't always tell who's a visitor and who's a worker. We sometimes forget that a democratic South Africa doesn't mean the same thing to everyone, that there's a whole layer of citizens who feel they've lost out as a result of other people's freedom. My interest in politics started long before I became a documentary filmmaker. It all began with my need to make sense of the racism that had a stranglehold over my country. That's when I realised whiteness means more than fair skin and straight hair. I began to see that those who buy into a white identity do so because it brings them considerable psychological benefits. It's all in the head. In this so-called rainbow nation, we remain focused on what it means to be black. Black pride helps us undo the internal damage caused by centuries of white supremacy. But maybe it's time to ask what it means to be white. I think a lot of white South Africans see white in terms of lack. Being white in terms of lack. Being lack of what? lack of being able to find the job, lack of whatever. Being persecuted. No. Being persecuted. Mm. Um, mm. I think there are plenty of, of white people doing their bit um, in South Africa. There are plenty of them who aren't, and and the same goes for for black people. You know, um, I just don't think that there's there's enough of it going on. I think that people. Um, sometimes go into their cocoon and, and probably this is true for a lot of white people mm -hmm. who find themselves in, in quite a well-off position. I mean, they, they sort of lager themselves the same way that they did before the transition. They just think, okay, well, I'm going to Plettenberg Bay for holidays and I've got my four by four and, and I'm behind high walls and that's it, you know. We have a major problem with crime. Uh, that's, that's the truth. So it is a tremendously stressful situation to be here. But, you know, we have all sorts of perks. I mean, mm. let's face it, I mean, this is a... You know, the kinds of things that we can get here, we can't necessarily get anywhere else. And I'm talking about lifestyle choices. I mean, what's the difference between a, a white English liberal and a, an Afrikaner? There's nothing that says, you know, if you are an Afrikaans-speaking white South African, you're automatically a racist. And, I think and you've just, as an whites. individual, got to be enlightened and and um, and think about these things mm. constantly in South Africa, you know. Um, and and as Hardy pointed out, you mm. have to constantly check yourself. And and white people have mm. to do it. Coloured people have to do it. Black people have to do it. You know, because there's a lot of like anti-white sentiment going on. I work with. Um, a lot of Afrikaans folk who are a lot more enlightened than some of the, the, the white English liberal folk that I live uh, I, I, I know. So, again, I think it depends where you find yourself. If you're trotting off to Irania and asking people about what it means to be white, you're going to get a lot of different answers. They're scary places in this country.